Good morning, everybody. Jan Hicks of Jan Hicks Creates here. Coming at you with a little bit of a stitch with me on, are you ready for it? A new project. This is one I've been thinking about and talking about for weeks now. So I am absolutely thrilled to be starting it. But first things first, it is July 5th, Friday, 8.23 a.m. here in my little corner of Oahu, 76 degrees and sunny, going up to 84, which means it will be hotter than 84. <laughs> Humidity and everything being what it is. I am glad to be home. I am still jet lagged. It's probably gonna take another few days before I get totally reacclimated. Six hours is a pretty big jump to go across. So we're getting there though. I managed to stay up till about 10.30 last night. It really hit me, hits me though. Um, hold on, looking at my pattern. It really hits me like it, I don't know, three, four o'clock in the afternoon where my body is thinking it's, you know, bedtime. It's six hours later, but we're getting there and I am sleeping pretty much through the night. I didn't wake up until about five this morning. So um, it's better than 3.30 or four, right? Which is how it's been the past couple days. So we're getting there. So anyway, still on the stitch con high, enjoying putting up the videos and share of the interviews and sharing all of those with you. Kind of makes me relive it each a little bit every day as I as I edit those. Um, so I, I think I think everybody's enjoying them. They seem to be getting a good response. I am definitely going to be doing the videos next year. And I hope to include some designers as well. So we shall see. I did make my reservations just before I started this video for room a room for next year. So now the waiting begins again. I hope you guys are ready to put your names on the waiting list once that opens up. And I will try and keep an eye on that um, and let you know when it opens up. So what am I working on? This is patchwork. I shared the photos on Instagram and my Facebook group, Jan Hicks Creates yesterday. I kind of chuckled because Letitia Beckett, crafty, the crafty curator, started something new yesterday as well. And I was like, well, I better get on it. If Letitia's starting something, I'm going to start something. So my new rule is when Letitia starts something, I have to start something. I think I can do that. Somebody laughed and said, I think it was, who was it, D? Maybe you said, um, you better be careful. She starts things fairly frequently. And I said, yeah, I think I start things. She start things, starts things as often as I do. So we'll keep each other company in our insanity. So anyways, patchwork. Like I said, I posted the pictures yesterday. This is a 36 count linen, antique white linen, nothing fancy. I did have this linen on my um, shopping list for keepsakes this past weekend. So I did pick it up and that's the only other thing I need. Well, actually I had to buy the pattern. I bought the pattern off of an Etsy site that offered it as a PDF. So I am working with it, with it as a PDF. Um, and I, I knew that I was going to start it as soon as I got home. So this is the first mo motif completed and I'm starting the second one. I am going to pull the picture down here and talk a little bit about my plan for this. So, as I've mentioned, I am, my plan is to do this as kind of a rainbow, kind of like the twisted band sampler idea, a rainbow on the diagonal, working my way down across the piece. And so I have started in this upper left corner. And that's what you're seeing here. 
This particular floss um, color, like I said, this is all, did I say? I don't know, but you know. This is all Mrs. Sadis's silk floss. All the different colors that I have, I'm going to be using. The first one is her colorway, her variegated colorway called Damasco. And um, I definitely wanted to use this one. She had, She is using it in, I don't know, something she showed on Instagram. And I really like the play of the red and the gray. So I thought it might be good to start with this one, kind of like coming from a dark area into the rainbow. It's kind of my feel for this. So first motif done, working over here, over here. So let me talk about these. So there's little bits in here and then there's little things here that look kind of like um, initials. And there's like the year here, 1992. I don't know whether there's any other place for initials on this besides down here at the bottom, which is the makers. And I love it that um, oh, underneath this little middle thing, and I won't be doing the middle area. I will be growing out the different patterns to fill in this. I love that his initials are the same as mine, so I don't have to change anything there. And then there's another date down here that I'm not sure what that is referring to. But I'm not actually sure if these are initials or if they are meant to be something else, just decorative elements filling in some blank spaces. So if anybody who has done this knows that, or who, if anybody who knows about this pattern knows what that is, I would love to um, be educated, because obviously I'm not. <laughs> okay, so the floss I'm using for this next one, of course, is also a red, doing the Roy G. Biv rainbow idea. And it's a very, very similar red to the red that's in Damasco. Maybe a little bit, just a little bit different. I, I, oh, I do wanna say I have all the blinds closed, so it's a little bit darker up here. This time of year then with, with that sun beating in in the morning, um, the apartment gets really hot and I do have the air conditioning on. So if you're hearing a hum in the background, that's what it is. So anyways, this is red, this, this band here will be all this band here will be all the red. And so my idea is I have my flosses all arranged in rainbow order. So that's the first one. This is the one I'm working with now. And then I'll be going to like a darker red and then heading into more of a rose, more of a mauve. And then I threw popcorn in there this is her colorway popcorn just because I love it and I need to use it somewhere and it seems to blend fairly well. On one side we have this kind of rosy mauve and on the other side we have this hot pink and there's both of those colors in popcorn. So my plan is To work this way so this is that red this will be the deeper red this strip in here well this strip in here will probably be the deeper red and then this will be going into the mauves now my plan is pull this silk up here so I don't drop it on the floor my my tentative plan is to like I said kind of work on the diagonal across the motifs like this and then I'll drop down here and come back up. And if there's any of the motifs that are smaller, like these ones down in here, I'm going to use the same color floss for them. I do not have enough colors of floss to do every single motif a different color. So I will have to double up on some. So I, I kind of eyeballed kind of how it's going to flow through the design. I'm hoping that it flows how I see it in my head. I do not, I'm, I may get like down here and run out of colors. And if that happens, I'm just going to go backwards through the rainbow, the Roy G. Biv rainbow. So I got the first motif done yesterday. 
yesterday was pretty much of a a down day for us. Mike, of course, was off work as a as a federal employee. He is um, he is at work for a few hours today. I don't really know when he's going to come home. He didn't take any food, so he basically said when he gets hungry, he'll come home. <laughs> he packs his lunch. Well, he, pa he packs his breakfast and his lunch. He ate breakfast at home here um, and headed off to, short to work in shorts and a t-shirt, which isn't his normal wear. Um, but on that, on that subject, I mentioned in my um, Floss 2 video the other day that I did want to start... I know, another new start. Whoops, I just dropped it all over the floor. <laughs> oh, goodness. Another new start. Um, I did want to do this for his birthday. I coffee tea dyed some of the um, linen that I had that's a good color. Because I don't have, this is haunted, what Cecilia is using here, and I don't have anything like that. So I decided to kind of grunge up what I did have. So this is the color that I'm using. It is just something old from my stash. I believe it's a 32 count. Um, it might actually be a 28 count. She calls for 28 count haunted cashel. So if it's 28, it's fine. Um, I did not have, well, the, I think the only called for color of thread that I had was lamb's wool, which is this outline here and some of the flowers. So I'm, I just pulled a bunch of different things from my stash that are similar. And yes, I will note those at some point. But anyway, once I'm done with this video, I hope to get a chance to get started on this before he comes home. Because then we have like the whole weekend where he's gonna be home, so I won't get any stitching done on it until until Monday and his birthday is the 17th so I also on Monday have to head downtown I have my first um, physical therapy appointment for my shoulder and while I'm down there there's a Goodwill store down downtown that I'm going to take a peek at and also go into the Ben Franklin that's down closer to town. It is, the one down closer to town is the biggest one on the island, so they have a better selection of frames and things. So I'm gonna look at the Goodwills, I'm gonna look at um, Ben Franklin and hopefully find a frame that will work for that piece while I'm out. So I can, as soon as I get it done, I can get it framed. You know, I could, I could work on it while he's around, he usually doesn't, pay much attention to what I'm working on or he doesn't say anything about it so I can only assume he isn't paying attention but this one because I did like dye the fabric and he came home to this like Pyrex bowl of fabric that I had just taken out of the oven <laughs> knowing, knowing him he'll notice this one and he'll ask a question and um, I just rather would not I, w I want it to stay a surprise so I will only work on it when he isn't here and he seems to be here an awful lot funny how that works huh so anyway that's kind of where I am with this and that and everything else I did want to ask you guys a couple questions because that's what I do right so um Let's see. Oh, couple couple notes of interest and then a couple questions, or at least one question. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm reading over my notes right now. So let's see, I wanted to tell you I do have, I think, five more interview videos to put up. And then I still have my, um, the construction of my pineapple video that I have to edit all together and put up. So I'll, I will get that done. That will probably go up next week. I'll get the videos done first, or the interview videos done first, and then I'll get the pineapple one up. So yeah, you're going to be seeing a lot of videos from me over the next week or so. Um, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> I think, I, from what I see, everybody's enjoying the interviews. Um, I know I certainly enjoy them, so that's good. I wanted to let you guys know that... Um, if you aren't aware of it already, Victorian motto, Nancy, 
um, Turner does Christmas in July every year. And what that means is every day in July, she gives something away. So if you are not already following her, you need to do that. She sends out an email every day with um, whatever the, the day's giveaway is and what you have to do. But in order to get those emails, you need to go to her website and I will link it below. And you need to follow her blog, you know, just like you follow other blogs. I believe hers is a blog spot blog. So you need to be a follower and then you will get the daily emails telling you what the giveaways are and um, you know, that you need to go and comment on. It's usually you comment on the post on her blog. So I highly encourage that. She has everything of course from the floss to the fabric to designs. Um, yeah, she's, she's just a wildly creative woman. So the other thing I wanted to ask you, actually the, the question I had for you, Michelle um, ADK Stitcher shared with me yesterday a floss tuber, a link to a video that she had done, and shoot, I was gonna, let me look that up because I forgot to look up the name, who does or has done one time-lapse video. She is working on the Pilgrim. Let's see, doesn't have her floss tube name on the link. She is Kylie Brand. Whoops, stop, the video started. Kylie Brand, K-Y-L-I-E, and again, I will link her below. Um, she's fairly new, and she is working on the long dog pattern, the Pilgrim, and she does a time-lapse video of it. And so Michelle showed that to me, and um, I thought it was very cool. But I started to think about, okay, doing a time-lapse. Like if I did a time-lapse of this one, you know, every time I stitch on it, I would record it and um, save it all into a video and, you know, put it all together. And she just has like music playing and the time-lapse playing. And it, it's really cool to see it grow. But my question is, would you watch it, I guess? I know when I do the stitch with me's, you like, there are those of you that like seeing the close up stitching. And so I know you're watching every once in a while. I don't know whether you watch, that's all you do to watch me stitch, but other ones just stitch and listen to me. So if there were a time lapse video, you know, it might be cool to watch it a little bit the first time, but then you're gonna be like, okay, well, I wanna get back to stitching and so I'm not gonna watch you just sitting there stitching and not talking to me. You know, I just don't know how useful, like I said, interesting to see it like the first time and for a little bit of it, but I didn't watch the whole video. I think the video was only like six minutes long. Um, she got a chunk of change done in that six minutes though, <laughs> which was just, I mean, it was cool to see, but I just, I don't know. Let me know what your thoughts are if you, after you watch it, like I said, I will link I will link the video below so you can find it and watch it if you haven't if you haven't come across it yet. So let's see. Yesterday we had planned to um, walk up to see the fireworks at Schofield Barracks. We were going to go over to Schofield um, earlier in the day but it was hot and it was humid and we we're jet lagged. So we decided we would just walk up where we live. We walk up the hill and kind of across the overpass that goes over H2 and Wheeler Air Force Base is right there. And then across like Schofield sits behind Wheeler closer to the mountains on the west side of the island. So we were going to walk up the hill and across the overpass and just kind of stand. We'd be able to see, like stand outside of Wheeler, we'd be able to see the fireworks from there. Mike does have as a DOD civilian, he can get onto all the bases, but um, we decided the vantage point there would be good enough. We got all ready to go out. It was about quarter till eight. And 
<laughs> we had had everything closed up yesterday because it was hot and humid and we had the AC running, so we didn't know. We get it ready to go, get the shoes on, get the GoPro ready to go out and film some fireworks. And we step outside and went, oh, it's raining. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> so turned around and came back in. We had started to watch um, Stranger Things. For those of you that... Uh, Stranger Things is a Netflix original. It's kind of a sci-fi, paranormal, I'm not sure what you classify it. It's right up our alley. Um, so season three just was released yesterday, but we decided we were going to go back and watch the first two seasons, um, rewatch them to remind ourselves of the storyline. So we started to binge watch that. Um, we only got one episode done before it was time to leave for the fireworks, so we walked outside. Okay, it's raining. Walked back in, took off our shoes, plopped back down on the couch, and continued with Stranger Things. <laughs> oh, well, that's okay. Mike made barbecue chicken and potato salad in the Instant Pot for dinner yesterday, so that was yummy. Several of you asked me at StitchCon... Is Mike going to do more cooking videos? And so I told him, I said, honey, your fans want to see more of you. You have an interesting take on the Instant Pot. The fact that you do gluten-free in the Instant Pot, a lot of people are interested in. So his response was, yeah, I got to get back on that. Of course, he had planned on doing some writing over the weekend before I came home, thinking that, you know, there'd be less distractions. He only has, he thinks he only has about three chapters left in the current book that he's writing. And that didn't happen either, so. You know, you kind of get in a rut and it's hard to get out of it. We're back in a rut of not exercising. I've got to get back to yoga. I'm feeling so stiff. My back is, my back is just not happy. I'm trying to decide where to jump to next. Um, I did have my MRI on Tuesday, the day after I got back. What a strange experience that was. Um, yeah, just, just one of the stranger experiences. You know, not only are you in this little tube, which is fine. I'm not claustrophobic. And they actually gave me um, a headset to listen to music. They had a local Hawaiian music radio station on, so that was kind of fun. Um, but I wasn't prepared. You know, Mike had told me that it made sounds, that it was noisy, because I had quipped, heck, I'm going to get in there and fall asleep. And he said, no, you're not. I understand. From what I understand, these things are noisy. And that is. But what's really funny to me is all the different noises. I guess the different, because it is resonance, you know, the different the different sounds have different depths and, and target different things. And it, it was just like, you would just get kind of into the flow of one sound like nin, 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 and then it would change chunk, 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 and then it would go faster and it would go slower and it was it's just a very strange experience but I don't expect to get results from that until um, and I don't expect to hear from a doctor until next week for that with the holiday and all that so hopefully I might have said this on my floss tube video the other day. Hopefully they are going to tell me more than just that they think it's arthritis. I really hope it's something that's, you know, fixable and not something that I have to live with. But if it is, you know, it is. And I will do what I need to do to make it as comfortable as possible. I know a lot of people that, in fact, Julie McConnell... Um, of reflections framing, you know, she she has her YouTube channel. She had mentioned, and I talked to her at, at StitchCon about it, how eating keto has totally reduced her inflammation and she's able to, she is off all of her pain meds because of it. So what the keto diet does, you know, one of the main causes of inflammation in our body is the carbs that we put into it. And by eating keto, getting rid of so many carbs, it reduces the inflammation and a lot of the 
a lot of the problems that, that hassle us every day disappear because of getting rid of carbs. I know that for a fact, I've experienced it, Mike experienced it, um, the keto is not an easy diet to do. It gets rather old after a while, and Julie was expressing that. So it's kind of a, I don't know, different mindset. Mike and I have done it several times, mostly to help with cholesterol. His experience was we had, we had, had been in a, an accident with our van. A, a kid was texting, and um, he was making a left, yeah, a left-hand turn while texting. He was looking down going into the turn. We were coming out of a side street and he rammed us. So he rammed right into Mike. Um, he wasn't hurt other than his, um, you know, his hands on the wheel. I don't know whether it was the airbag coming out, but it, it jammed his wrist. And um, basically the doctor said that it's a, it's a, a I guess it was like a tendonitis type of problem that would never really get better. And he always did have pain. It was kind of like early onset, I guess, arthritis in that wrist. And he felt it all the time. And he had a hard time, and that's when he was really starting to write and publish his book, so he was writing a lot. And he could only write for certain periods, for, you know, certain periods of time before he had to take breaks before his wrist was hurting too badly. Well, when we started eating keto, like I said, the main reason was to help control cholesterol. But um, what he found was that his wrist pain totally disappeared and it has not returned. And we haven't eaten keto now in at least, at least three or four years. So that's kind of amazing. I don't know if I'm doing this right at all. <laughs> okay, I have to go up there. All right, guys, that's about a half an hour. I am going to stop this here this weekend. What do we have planned this weekend? We are going to do a hike out to um, Kayana Point. Kayana Point is the, um, so if you have the island of Oahu, Kayana Point is the northwesternmost tip of the island. And you can't drive out there. The roads on whether you're coming on the North Shore or the West Shore, the roads only reach so far. And it's like a four or five mile walk to get out to that point. So Mike and I plan on packing a lunch, packing lots of water. And it's not really a hike. It's mostly gravelly shoreline that you're walking on. But that is our plan for hopefully tomorrow. Hopefully we can get out early. So I hope to have some interesting pictures for you for next floss tube next week. Um, like I said, I'll be putting up the interview videos every day. I will have, um, I have to get my, like I said, my pineapple video. I am totally off here. Crap, I am off. Just a few stitches though. I have to get my pineapple video up, like I said. So all of that will be coming up in the next week. Those of you who missed me, I'm back. Hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions about this, let me know. Like I said, um, Victorian Motto, if you aren't signed up for her emails yet, go do that. She has so many great giveaways. And, um, I think that is all for today. I will talk to you guys soon all over the interwebs. I love you. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.